Hey all, welcome back to another episode of Car Topics Explained. Today we return the spotlight back to BMW so that we can have a look at one of their latest race cars, the BMW M8 GTE. And there is one reason in particular as to why I am so interested in this car, and why you should be too, the powertrain. The engine used in the M8 race car is based off of the BMW S63 T4 V8 engine first used in the new BMW M5 road car. But of course, the engine used in the race car, while it shares some characteristics with the street engine, has numerous modifications that make it different, and as a result, has its own unique designation, the BMW P63-1. The racing engine retained the cast parts in the engine block and cylinder head from the street engine, whilst essentially the remaining 2300 components that made up the engine were modified, a great deal of them being specifically engineered for the P63-1. As per the regulations of the GTE class, the engine's displacement was reduced from 4.4 liters to 4. A new crank drive was designed, involving the addition of a flat plane crankshaft, which includes a regular firing order, giving the racing engine an even sportier sound. The intake and exhaust system were both of course modified, and the turbochargers used on the car were completely redesigned. Some of these modifications and upgrades are meant to help increase the efficiency of the engine as well. And the end result is, and I quote, This results in the fuel burning very quickly and comprehensively at the optimal time, at a maximum temperature of over 2100 degrees Celsius. This allows the P63-1 to achieve efficiency levels well above 40%. This makes it the most efficient BMW racing engine ever in sports car and touring car racing. This efficiency gives teams far greater flexibility with regard to race strategy." End quote. The drivability of the P63-1 is also worthy of praise, as any driver who has access to it will enjoy instant throttle response and linear power delivery. The engine will likely only ever be seen to produce 500 to 600 horsepower depending on the rules at any given time, but I would be surprised if it wasn't super easy to turn up the power all the way to a high 800 horsepower or low 900 horsepower at the crank. As I understand it, these engines are built to withstand a lot more than what they endure at factory levels, whether we're talking about street engines or the racing versions. In terms of endurance, however, from a racing standpoint, I can understand why it would be risky to run your engine right at the limit for the duration of an entire race. The maximum redline of the M8's engine is approximately 7,000 RPM, the specific number is not available. Connected to the P63 is an X-Track 6-speed sequential gearbox with an electronic paddle shift system. Some other noteworthy components include a limited slip differential, carbon fiber reinforced plastic drive shaft, and a Sox carbon fiber clutch. The car itself is, quote, a composite body with a carbon fiber core and DMSB approved safety roll cage, end quote, and a CFRP outer shell. The car is just under 5 meters long, 2 meters wide, and 1.2 meters tall. These measurements do not include things like the massive rear wing and the side mirrors. For the suspension, the car has got double wishbones on the front and rear axles, front and rear four-way adjustable shock absorbers, and anti-roll bars with quick adjustment. And of course, as you can tell, the car is equipped with top-of-the-line hardware. The same can be said for the software as well. The software for engine management, the gearbox, and driver assistant functions are all developed in-house by BMW. The steering wheel has 16 buttons and 7 dials. The car has a rear view camera system with object recognition and a live telemetry system for vehicle monitoring. The wheels are BMW 18 inches, 12.5 on the front and 13 on the rear. Wrapped around them are Michelin tires, 30 by 68 R18s on the front, 31 by 71 R18s on the rear. I personally am a very big fan of the M8 and its potential. I like the use of the S63 power plant and hope BMW can secure some victories with this car. If you're a fan of the M8 GTE like me, you can of course start building the M8 coupes on the BMW website, which of course as an automotive enthusiast is always fun. Well, anyways, that's all for the M8 GTE. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then check out some of the other episodes of my series, Car Topics Explained. I of course do videos on race cars, rare cars, movie cars, video game cars, and much more. I know plenty of you are looking forward to my video guide on how to build a fully functional M3 GTR replica, 
Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about it. I'm just working on putting the guide together and collecting info on the requirements such as costs and parts and all that. But don't worry, it's coming. Beyond Car Topics Explained, I do car reviews, vlogs, I have a series documenting my adventures buying and modifying my own cars, and I do gaming. So if you're new and any of that interests you, then have a peruse through my channel, and hey, if you're extra cool, then maybe even subscribe. If you want to go the extra mile and help support the channel and fund these videos so that we can get better equipment, travel to cool locations, or help finish projects like the WRX so that we can start the E46 build you all want me to do, then head over to my Patreon. But hey, whatever you do, even if it's nothing, I hope you guys have an awesome day and take it easy and keep it crazy. I, Tom, the Racing Joker, am signing out.